Oya. 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 Welcome to InfoGamer. Today we have an exciting lesson. We're going to show you how to create another platform prefab, and this platform is going to do something special. It's going to be like this. Yeah. It's going to make it more difficult for players. So we already have the standard platform, and but you can't just have standard platforms because that's too easy. So we're going to add moving platforms to our game. So it creates a bit of a challenge. So here we are at our workstation, and we have Unity open because we're going to show you how to create a moving platform for our game. Now this platform is going to be moving in the horizontal direction, just back and forth between both ends of the screen. Now what we'll need to do first is we'll need to find our standard platform prefab that we created in a past video, and we're going to modify that platform. So we'll click on it and drag it into the scene view. Now the first thing that we need to do is change the color of this platform. So we'll go to our sprites folder and we'll find another color for our platform and in this case we're going to use the blue. You can use the green if you want or if you have a different color, if you have pink, whatever platform that you've created. You just want to make sure that it's different from your standard platform. So we're going to use the blue. We're going to click on that and drag it into our sprite renderer. And that was relatively easy. You can now see that it's the same size and it's everything's the same except for now the color's blue. So now what we'll need to do is create a script for this specific platform that will control its movement. So we'll go to our scripts folder. Then what we'll do is we'll go to create C sharp script. And I'm going to call it moving platform. Then we'll go ahead and open it in mono behavior. Once it's open, the first thing that we will do is change our start function to an onEnable function. Now we'll need to create a couple variables, so I'll go ahead and write them and then I'll explain what they are. Alright, so the first variable that we created, left, right, is of type integer, and it's pretty much going to be a boolean, where we're only either going to store a 0 or a 1. And this is going to determine which direction our platform is moving. And the reason why we want it to be an integer is so that we can randomize what value it starts at. The next one, switch up, is a boolean value, and it's going to make it so that we have a smoother transition when our platforms reach one of the ends. Then we have our speed variable, which is of type float, and that's going to determine exactly how fast the platform is moving. Then we have another float, which is max x, which is going to be the boundaries, both in the positive and negative direction on how far the platform goes. Then we have two more floats. One is going to be for the ranges that we will randomize the speed at. And so we have a minimum speed and a maximum speed. And, and we're going to write a code that picks a value between those two variables. And finally, we have a game object, which is called platform, which will be the current platform that we have selected. Now we'll go ahead and write the code that will randomize both the direction that our platform is moving and the speed of our platform. All right, so this first line of code, left, right equals random dot range, and then we put 0 and 2, we'll select a random value, a random integer value between 0 and 1. I know it says 2, but it actually will select 1. That's what you need to write. Then we have an if statement and an else statement, and these check depending on whether or not left, right is 1 or 0. It sets our switch up Boolean value to either true or false. And finally, the speed equals random dot range speed min and speed max. This is the line of code that will select a random value between these two ranges. Now what we'll need to do is create a function. So we'll say void and we'll call it movement 
function. And inside, I'll go ahead and write all the code needed, and then I'll explain what it does. All right, so now that we have this code written, I'll explain what it does. So first we have an if statement that checks whether or not the platform's position in the x direction is greater than or equal to the max x boundary. And it also checks whether our switch up is equal to true. Now if both of these statements are true, then it sets the switch up equal to false and our left right equal to zero. Now if one of these statements is false, then it checks this if statement. So it checks whether or not our platform's x position is less than or equal to negative x boundary, and if switch up is equal to false. Now if both of these are true, then it changes the switch up equal to true, and it sets the direction equal to 1. Now if both of these statements are false, then it goes to this else statement. So in other words, if the platform is within the boundaries, it'll go to this else statement. And this else statement checks which first which direction it's going. Is it going left or is it going right? And then depending on what it is, it changes the platform's position in their x direction. It moves it either to the left or to the right according to the speed value. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to call this function in the update function. So we'll say movement function parentheses semicolon now we'll need to save it and we'll go back to unity and we'll drag our moving platform script onto our platform prefab and I'm going to rename our platform to platform 2 then what we'll need to do is set a couple of these variables so first we'll drag in our platform to the platform game object field then we'll need to change their speed, min and max. So I'll set the min to 2 and the max to 7. Then we need to set the boundary for our platform and how far it will move from center. So I've already checked and it's 2.5 for us. If you want to check, the best way to do that is to just move your platform as far as you can to the right before it disappears off your game screen. So right about there, and it's pretty close to 2.5. You can see up here and for the position in the x direction. And so 2.5 is what we want. Now that's all we need to set. And let's test it, see how it works. So you can see that the platform moves back and forth and it doesn't go off the screen. And then our box dude can actually land on it and his jump function works when he lands on both of these platforms. So that's exactly what we want. Now the last thing that we need to do is make a new prefab for this platform that we just made. So we'll click on our platform and drag it into the prefabs folder. Once it's in the prefab folder we can go ahead and delete it from our scene. Make sure that you save your scene and your project. Well we hope you enjoyed this video where we showed you how to create a moving platform. Now, in the previous video, we showed you creating groups of platforms. So now you can go ahead and create more groups of platforms that contain moving platforms. That was a lot of platforms that I just said. Yeah, it did. And I'll say it one more too. Platforms. Platforms yeah. are important because <laughs> we're platforms. making a platform game. Yeah, so there's going to be a lot of platforms in this uh, video game. Yeah. More than we can count. And more to come too in future videos. But make sure that you subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. You can also check out this video 
on Mark's face for the beginning of our playlist where you can start at the beginning if you're just joining us now. 